Welcome to the lecture number 5 of the course Quantum Mechanics and Molecular Spectroscopy. In the previous lecture, we were looking at the time dependent perturbation theory of two states. If we had a time independent Hamiltonian H0 and had two solutions. E22 such that 1 and 2 form a complete set and um, so it also means form a orthonormal complete set. That means integral 1 overlap integral of 1 over 2 will be equal to 0 and overlap integral 1 over 1 equals to 2 over 2 equals to 1. Okay. Now, in the last class we had uh, ended up with this equation i h bar a 1 dot t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar. 1 plus a 2 dot t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar 2 equals to h prime of t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar a 1 1 a 1 of t 1 plus h prime of t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar a 2 of t 2. So, this is where we stopped in the last lecture okay. and this we came from LHS and this came from the RHS. Now, we have to equate this and try to get going to what happens. Now, I am going to do one simple trick that is I am going to multiply with psi 1 star on left and integrate. So, which simply means that I will carry out the operation 1. So, when I look at the LHS then it will become i h bar okay, 1 a 1 dot t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar 1 plus 1 a 2 dot t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar 2 that will be your left hand side and the right hand side will be 1 h prime of t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar a 1 of t 1 plus 1 h prime of t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar a 2 of t 2. So, these are the four terms that we have. Now, if you look at the left hand side then what we have is i h bar okay, 1 
a1 dot t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar 1. Okay, I will come to second term little bit. First, let us just you know look at this term. What is a1 dot t? a1 dot t is nothing but d by dt of a1 of t. What is a1 of t? It is a time dependent. Okay, a1 of t is Okay, nonetheless, even if it is time dependent, it is a constant, it is going to change, but it is still a constant. Okay. But you know, one, this wave function one is a solution of the time independent Schrodinger equation. So, what was one? One is nothing but h naught, one is equal to E1. One. So, the operator in here is time dependent. and the wave function is time independent. Therefore, one can write, you can bring the operator outside because it is not going to affect the wave function. So, what we will have, left hand side will have i h bar okay, a 1 dot t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar 1 1 and the second term which I have not written here, but you know by analogy one can write it as a 2 dot t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar 1 2. So, that will be your left hand side. Now, let us look at the right hand side. So, let I okay, LHS is equal to, okay. I will separate them and then equate it later. So, RHS is equal to, what you had in the RHS? RHS you had H prime uh, 1, H prime of t e to the power of minus i E1 t by H bar A1 of t. 1. So, that is what you had one of the terms. Okay. Now, now, you can see that e to the power of minus i e to the power of minus i e 1 t h bar and a 1 of t these are just you know time dependent phase factor and a coefficient which you can bring it out. But I cannot bring out h prime of t because it is a time dependent perturbation. A perturbation always moves the states. So, it will affect your wave functions. A perturbation really affects a wave function and if you have time dependent perturbation, its effect will be different in different times. Therefore, one can write this, uh, the other term we had was 1 h prime of t e to the power of minus i e to t by h bar a 2 of t 2. Okay. So, that was your RHS. Okay. Now, this I can slightly rewrite because of the arguments that I use will be equal to a 1 of t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar 1 h prime of t 1 plus a 2 of t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar 1 h prime of t 2. So, that is your RHS. Okay. Now, let us equate RHS and let us see and what we get. So, i h bar into a 1 dot t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar 1, 1 plus a 2 dot t 
e to the power of minus i e to t by h bar 1 2 should be equal to a 1 of t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar 1 h prime t 2 plus a 2 t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar 1 h prime t two. okay that is what you will get. Now let us look at this. Now we know the equations or the wave sorry now we know the wave functions 1 and 2 are orthonormal which means 1 1 integral overlap integral will go to 1 and 1 2 overlap integral will go to 0. That means on the left hand side only one term will survive. So what you get is i h bar a 1 dot t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar that 1 1 is just 1 should be equal to a 1 of t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar 1 h prime t 1 plus a 2 of t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar 1 h prime t 2. Okay. Now we will have what? Now let us suppose you have two solutions. This is your 1 with E1 as the energy and this is 2 with E2 as energy. Now I apply, so let us suppose there is a molecule which is sitting here. Okay? I apply the perturbation and what happens is that the molecule after I apply perturbation still is in 1. Okay? So let us say after perturbation I will get another molecule which is this. But it still is in the E1 state. That means whether you apply perturbation or not apply perturbation, okay, you won't be able to differentiate. So if I start with state one and end up in state one, you don't even know whether you have started and ended or not. Therefore, any perturbation which leads on to the same wave function is can be neglected. Okay, it's like transition to the stem states. You start from ground state and you go to back to the ground state. So you do not even know whether the transition state has taken place or not taken place. Therefore, one can equate this term to be 0 because the perturbation here acts on state 1 and overlaps with the state 1. That means you have started with state 1 and ended with state 1. You do not even know whether the perturbation has taken place or not. Okay. So effectively the first term will go to 0. Okay. So this is nothing but transitions. or perturbations to the same state do not count. Okay? Now in such scenario then your first term is gone. So what you get is i h bar a 1 dot t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar equals to a 2 of t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar 1 h prime t 2. Okay? So, that is one equation that we will get. Okay? Let us this do this, let us go back to the first equation that I wrote in the beginning of the lecture that is nothing but i h bar a 1 dot t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar 1 plus 
a2 dot t e to the power of minus i e2 t by h bar 2 should be equal to a1 t h prime of t e to the power of minus e1 t by h bar 1 plus a2 t h prime of t e to the power of minus e2 t by h bar 2. So, that was the equation that we started with. Multiply with psi 2 star and integrate. Okay, this is equivalent of you know 2. Okay. Now remember last time we multiplied with psi 1 star and integrated. Now we are multiplying with psi 2 star and integrated. So quickly I will write skip couple of steps because you already know how we did it with the psi 1 star. So what we get is this i h bar. a1 dot t e to the power of minus i e1 t by h bar 2 1 plus a2 dot t e to the power of minus i e2 t by h bar 2 to overlap integral should be equal to a1 of t e to the power of minus i e1 t by h bar 2 h prime of t 1 plus a2 dot a2 not a2 dot t a2 t e to the power of minus i e2 t by h bar 2 h prime t Okay. Now, we use the same analogy as last time. So, 2, 1 overlap integral will go to 0, 2, 2 event will be 1. So, this integral we do not know, we have to evaluate. But once again, transitions from 2 to 2 will be equal to 0. So, this will go to 0. Okay. So, after this we can rewrite this equation as i h bar a2 dot t e to the power of minus i e2 t by h bar should be equal to a1 t e to the power of minus i e1 t by h bar 2 h prime of t 1. Okay. This is the second equation. Okay. Now, what I will do is I will correct both the equations together. So, first equation was i h bar e1 dot t e to the power of minus i e1 t by h bar should be equal to e2 of t e to the power of minus i e2 t by h bar 1 h prime of t 2 and i h bar a2 dot t e to the power of minus i e2 t by h bar this is equal to a1 of t e to the power of minus i e1 t by h bar 2 h prime t 1. Okay? Now, there is something else that I can do is I will take the ih bar slightly rearrange these two equations. Okay. So, a1 dot t equals to the ih bar I can take on the other side. So, i becomes 1 over ih bar okay. e to the power of e1 t i e1 t h bar I'll, by h bar I will take the other side. So, that will become e to the power of minus i e2 minus e1 t by h bar 1 
h prime of t 2 and the other equation will become a 2 dot t is equal to 1 over i h bar e to the power of ok. Now, this is e 2 minus so that will become i e 2 minus e 1 into t by h bar 2 h prime t 1. Now, let us say e, one, e 2 minus e 1 is equal to delta e, this is equal to h bar omega 2 1. Okay, omega 2 1 will be the angular frequency thus corresponds to the energy difference between the E 2 and E 1 states. So, therefore, now you can see when I replace E 2 minus E 1 as h, h bar omega 2 1, this h bar in the numerator and this h bar in the denominator will get cancelled. So, what you finally end up with the following equations A 1 dot t equals to 1 over i h bar a 2 t e to the power of minus i omega 2 1 t 1 h prime of t 2 and a 2 dot t is equal to 1 over i h bar a 1 of t e to the power of i omega 2 1 t 2 h prime of t 1. Okay. So, these are, so which means the time dependence of a 1 will depend on a 2 and time dependence of a 2 will depend on a 1. That means, these two equations are coupled differential equations. Okay. Now, more importantly, one thing that you can look at is the following A1 changes okay, with respect to A2 and A2 changes with respect to A1. Now, there is one thing that is very interesting is, is this here. This is e to the power of minus i omega t and this e to the power of plus i omega t. So, which means these two are phased out. What it means? It means when a 1 goes up, a 2 comes down and a 2 goes up, a 1 comes down. So, these are uh, phased out or out of phase with respect to each other. So, coefficients a 1 t and a 2 t are out of phase with respect to each other. Okay. So, what is a 1 and t? Psi of x comma t is equal to a 1 of t e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h bar 1 plus a 2 of t e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h bar 2. So, this was our total wave function okay? and this is are the coefficients time different coefficients of the a 1 and a 2 and we know the square of the coefficients gives you the probability. Therefore, okay, so when you see that a 1 and a 2 are out of phase with respect to each other, that means the probability of finding a 1 state, if it goes up, the probability of finding a 2 state will go down. Similarly, if the probability of a 2 state will go up, then the probability of a 1 state will go down. So, they are going to be with respect to each other phased out or you know out of phase. We will stop here and continue in the next lecture. Thank you.